Hey everybody and welcome back to the MedBros channel and today we're going to be talking about some huge news that broke this morning about the step one exam of medical school. And for those of you that don't know, step one is the biggest exam any medical student will ever take. It is the exam that determines what you're going to do with the rest of your career, what are your options. It's a huge exam. Just like the SAT and the MCAT, the US Assembly Step 1 had been on a numerical scale from 0 to 300 with the average score being around 230 and really good scores being above 250, 260. Basically, there was a general range for what an amazing score was, what kind of scores would get you certain specialties, but the NBME is flipping all this upside down by making this exam pass and fail. The most important exam for medical students is now pass and fail. So immediately we can start to wonder how are people gonna be differentiated? How are more competitive specialties gonna be selected for? How are these program directors gonna tease through these applications, these thousands of applications to find that person that they want? Well, that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video and we'll give you our thoughts on this and we are very passionate about how we feel about this new scoring system. But let's just look at what's the most important things program directors look at for internal medicine. So as you can see here, the step one score by far is the number one factor and you're gonna see this across the board for a lot of other specialties. USMLE step one score has been monumentally important in differentiating who qualifies for a certain specialty, who is competitive enough to be selected as a candidate. So let's just chop that off and look at the next few things that show up on this list. Letters of recommendation are now going to be huge. Who you know, how you connect with them, and how willing they are to vouch for you as a person is going to be huge in taking that next step of your career. Step two score. Now a lot of people think at this point, if you knock out step one, step two is going to be of more importance. It's the more clinical based exam while step one is a more basic sciences exam. It makes sense weighing step two a little more than it has been historically. Historically is some people back in the day didn't even use to take step two because programs didn't look at them. More and more programs are starting to look at step two and I predict that step two is gonna be a very critical component, especially because they're keeping the numerical scores for now for step two. Who knows, they might change that to pass, no pass as well, but I do think step two might even take the place of step one or be a little under letter of recommendation. So I think it's gonna move up on this list. Great grades during your clerkship year. Now this is where things get a little iffy. How is this gonna be standardized? There's gonna be different preceptors across the map. They're gonna be treating students differently. There's gonna be easier ones. There's gonna be schools that give out honors for free. There's gonna be all sorts of discrepancies. The US Assembly Step 1 was a great way to differentiate between all that. Now it's gonna be a pish posh. It's gonna be who do you know? Who's gonna write your letter of recommendations? Did you get lucky with the right preceptor to give you honors? It's just looking a little bit like a mess, as you can see. The big takeaway here is if you cut out step one, letters of recommendation are gonna be huge. Who you know is gonna be huge. Your clerkship grades are gonna be more significant. Step two, you're gonna actually have to care about, unfortunately. It's gonna be a lot of changes going on in the medical field. And it's gonna be beyond just this one step one score. I wanna talk about how this is gonna affect the entire medical education process. This is actually a huge deal. So after looking at this data, let's talk a little bit about the positives that are gonna happen as a result of this. One of the main things here and one of the main reasons that was actually cited by the individuals making this change was that it's gonna be better for student wellness. These students are going to be able to enjoy their first and second year a lot more. You don't have to kill yourself to know all these HLA haplotypes and all these tiny little details that in the long run, unless you go into a very sub-specialized field, is not gonna be that relevant to your future practice. So less stress about that, more wellness, more time to focus on other things, more time to just soak in medical school. That's really what they were aiming for and I do believe that is going to be a positive that is gonna happen as a result of this change. Your first and second year is going to be a lot more relaxed. I mean, especially second year. Starting second year, a lot of people start freaking out about STEP. It's all that's on their mind. They're freaking out. It's gonna be a lot more relaxed if it's pass, no pass, I'll tell you that much. You're gonna save a lot of money. Some of these resources can take you up to the thousands of dollars to pile up all of these different question banks and resources. You're gonna to have to cut out a lot of that and unfortunately for these companies, it's gonna be a little hit to their revenue. I'm sure not by much. There's still a lot of really great resources out there, but I'm sure a lot of them are like, oh crap. There go some of our sales. <laughs> And that's all the positives I can really think about. Sure, there's gonna be some wellness, but let's talk about why this wellness is kind of gonna be artificial and why the negatives I feel far outweigh the positives. So as you've seen, what's gonna become more important is letters, who you know, et cetera. And what that means is a lot more nepotism and a lot more kissing that booty. <laughs> 
And what I mean by that is you're gonna see students really selecting who they interact with, who they do elective rotations with, who they kiss up to, who they're super nice to, whose kids they buy gifts for. It's gonna be a lot worse than it already is. I mean, this is honestly the part I hate it about being a medical student and I'm gonna hate it being an intern. I'm gonna hate it until I'm finally the attending where I plan to be a very chill, relaxed attending that is not going to look at those things in a positive light. And just because you complimented my research paper that I wrote 20 years ago, I'm not going to all of a sudden love you. Just because I know you were up late last night eating Cheetos with Netflix on the side and you just reviewed my paper and had a good couple points to come in the morning to tell me. Because there's something called just a natural respect you have for an attending or somebody that's teaching you. And I certainly respect everybody above me and they're amazing people, but there comes a level where you're clearly acting in a way to receive something. And I think you're gonna see a lot more of that, which I think is, really unfortunate. I do not like that aspect of medicine or in any professional setting, whether it be business, whether it be making connections for anything. Like Beneath mentioned in a previous video that she had, it's just not something that we're comfortable with. So big point here, a lot of nepotism, a lot of who you know, a lot more personal connecting, let's say. And I think that's going to hurt a lot of students that don't know how to get out there and do that, even myself included. I am not good at stuff like that. <laughs> Another big point is that this is gonna be pretty detrimental to IMG students, DO students, Caribbean students. I think these people are gonna take a little bit of a hit, unfortunately, because this step one exam was a way for them to differentiate themselves. It was a way for them to set themselves apart from the rest of the crowd and say, hey, look, I'm at this Caribbean DO out of country school, but I can hang with the rest of the big boys look at my score. And it worked out well for a lot of these people. There are people from the Caribbean doing neurosurgery. There are people from India, China, wherever out here succeeding and thriving. But that was because they had a really good step one score. They pulled out their own letters. They had a solid application. Lack of that step one score is gonna hurt them quite a bit. Another point being thrown around is that doctors in the future might not be as good as doctors currently. And that's because they didn't study in depth as much as they should have during the first two years. And I disagree and I agree. Let's break that down for a second. For example, I've come across radiologists that are well versed in their microbiology and their pathology because that relates to their field. It's not just about reading an x-ray or a CT. To be a good radiologist, you do have to know what is going on at the pathological level. And you do get that as a basic foundation in first and second year of medical school. And while I can go on about how our educational system is broken, from kindergarten all the way through medical school, I would change so much. But I will say that the first two years of medical school, at least you get a great foundation in the basic sciences. I think most medical students coming out of American medical schools in the first two years are very solid with their basic sciences foundation right now because they have to force themselves to be prepared for step one. Because to really do well in that exam, you need to know your stuff. But why I disagree in this point is because I have seen individuals barely pass step one and be absolute beasts that I have the most respect for as doctors. They absolutely can go on to be the ones teaching those that get 250s, 260s. So a score is just a score. Just like your MCAT score, just like your SAT score, it doesn't define you. Absolutely never let a score define how smart you are or anything like that. And never revere somebody because they get a score because you can be just as good. Another point is that our long awaited step one video, which I've been working really hard on, I've been collecting a lot of data. I was gonna present it very soon and that is still gonna come out, but it's only gonna be relevant for the next two years before they implement this because the video I'm gonna release after that on how to prepare step one is going to be buy your world and do it once and you should be good to go. So all in all, with these changes going live in 2022, my conclusion is I am so glad that I got done with step one when I did. I am really happy for my siblings who are also gonna be done before the changes because I think this is gonna be a huge misstep in medical school education. You're gonna have some artificially calm M1 and M2s who are actually gonna be working a lot harder in other ways. They're gonna to have to go out of their way to really build a resume, really get that research, really get that experience, really connect with people, play the more social game and get to know the doctors, get good letters. It's going to be a different game and who knows how much step two is gonna be weighted. They might end up just having a different kind of exam weighted just as high. To me, America is beautiful because it is a meritocracy. If you work hard, you have something that people want, or you do something that is helpful to a bunch of people, you will be successful. 
That is the beauty of it. And if everyone is passing, you have to look at what the consequences are gonna be for how they are going to separate. And I think those ways that they are going to use to separate students in the future are far more detrimental than looking at someone's dedication and killing a test and separating themselves from the pack. I think it's, it's not gonna be a good thing in the future. And one of the biggest concerns I have is those people that really needed that test to prove themselves. Maybe something happened during their clerkship years. Maybe they needed to take a year off. People need that proving grounds to show that, hey, I can hang with everybody else. And if you take that away from them, I don't know what the landscape is gonna look like. So those are our thoughts here at MedRose, guys. Please let me know. I am really anxious to hear about what all of you guys think about these changes. We just wanted to stop by here. What do you think about these changes? Um, oh man, I look wrong. Uh, look at the sweat. This room is a sweat room, man. Depends on your specialty, I think. I think it's dependent. That's a good point too. That's a great point also, that you bring up really last minute. For DO students, no. Or IMGs or Sorry. Caribbean, anybody. Yeah, yeah I, I went over that. Them, so. Yeah. But that's a great point. Great. Yeah, if you are just trying to be you know, a family medicine pra practice doctor. Like I mentioned, no hate toward them, obviously, but like I mentioned previously, it all depends on what level you're at. If you're just trying to do family medicine, you're just trying to go through, trying to match be a doctor, this is great news. You're gonna breeze through the first yeah. two years. That's a great point. So make sure you subscribe and become one of the med bros, and we'll see you guys in the next one.